congrats on the movie. Thank you. This is one of those, um, uh, for some reason, I think the British have figured out how to do excellent period pieces. Yeah, we've had a long time to figure it out. <laughs> we've got a lot, of, a lot of period to go through. Um, uh, this is one of those special movies based on a really, like, hugely successful book. I mean, people have talked about it for so long. Uh, I, I hate asking the generic question, but how familiar were you with the book and the source material prior to getting involved? I was probably, I think within the cast, one of the most familiar to it, um, strangely, because I, I studied it at school twice. I studied it at GCSE in my history class and in uh, A-level, so that's, for those of you who don't know, that's sort of 16 to 18 for my English literature. Um, so I knew it very, very well, and actually studying thing, these things at school can either turn you off a text or it can really turn you on to it. And, and I, I found this, I found Testament of Youth an incredibly moving and important book in my youth. So I, I came to it with quite a lot of knowledge, yeah. Uh, what was, for you, when you first got involved in the project to what people are seeing on screen, how much changed along the way? Or was it a case of you were given the script and that's actually what you made? Uh, it changed a little bit, not a huge amount, from when I first read the script. Only, only little bits, like where they placed the poems. Um, in the first incarnation that I read, I was involved in the swimming scene at the start. I was right there from the start. And that didn't have quite the impact upon Vera that we needed, so it got shifted back, which I was thankful for, so I didn't have to go in minus temperature in a, in, a, in a pond somewhere in North Yorkshire. Um, yeah, it, 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 was pretty, it was pretty set, really. And, and I was glad for that, because sometimes scripts that you first read, you want, you hope that they'll you know, tweak bits of, but with this, I, I fell in love with the initial, the initial incarnation of it. This is going to sound like such a stupid question to ask someone, but we see you on the poster with, with short hair. Yeah. So this was the role that you cut your hair for. I'm really smug in this. <laughs> I'm really smug and happy with myself. Right. Uh, this wasn't the role that I cut my hair for. This was a wig. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say good job then. It was my hair during this film was actually like down here, but we pinned it all up and then had a wig placed. Which I was really worried about because wigs can, if they don't look right, can whatever you're doing acting wise can just completely distract. But this one was made by a great wig maker called Peter Owen and it, it worked. It's sort of, but it was nice to kind of play that young again. To, I looked in the mirror when I first got on and had a shaved face and I was like, wow, okay, maybe I can still do 19 just. <laughs> oh, I would imagine that uh, you were obviously. The sh Game of Thrones is incredibly popular, mm. and I uh, would imagine that, could you walk around with the, the wig and actually be a little bit more anonymous? And did you enjoy that? So absolutely. Like, if I shave this off, I become a lot more anonymous, even with long hair. It's, it's a certain look I sport for Game of Thrones, and, um, and that's become kind of a certain look for me, but it, it was nice you know, it was nice to do a piece where I broke free from that image and it helped him playing the character, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed sort of being distanced in that way from, from a role that a lot of people see me as. Uh, the time period that you guys are portraying in the film is such a, a, such a change in society, so powerful, from the pre-World War I to the post-World War I. Obviously, I'm sure you did some research and you know, learned about the period, was there anything that you took away from it that really surprised you? Or maybe something you learned in the research process that surprised you? I think it was the courtship rituals that I found most interesting researching. The kind of the idea that, I knew it from the book, obviously, but actually acting it out. Um, there's a scene in which we go on a date in London and I have a chaperone, she has a chaperone, and it, it was the sort of, it was investigating, you know, I knew uh, the, the war side of things, I knew quite a lot about. There wasn't a huge amount that surprised me in doing this film that I didn't already know um, from my own knowledge or research. Um, but it was, it was the idea of a, a little touch of the hand or a stroke of the neck that he, that he commits in this film, which is 
tantamount to much ruder things nowadays in in cinemas. You know, it, it was really that was kind of exciting to me the i the idea that that just touch back then when someone wasn't married was incredibly sort of um, dangerous and, and and naughty. I, I like that. I like kind of me and Alicia like playing around with that idea. Yeah, it's also crazy to realize that that was a hundred years ago. Yeah, how much has changed, you know, in that one hundred years? And also, how much has changed for for women? That's one of the big parts of this film, and how much needs to change. But a hundred years ago, Oxford had three, had thirty three colleges, and three of those colleges were women's colleges, and they couldn't be mixed. And if going out in the town, they had to have a chaperone with them the whole time. I mean, it's it, this is this is stuff we that. The, Maybe we forget now is how 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 much this war changed changed opinions about women's roles really. A hundred percent, and it, it, it's a. Uh, uh, I said it to you off camera, and I'll say it again. I think it's a, a really well made film, uh, and I really do hope people turn out. Um, jumping into, uh, I don't want to ask any specifics about Game of Thrones because I'm too much of a fan. I don't want to know anything. Sure. However, I am curious about uh, what can you tease people in terms of when do you start filming again? What's because I see the hair and the yeah. beard. Um, I can't tell you anything about that. I can't tell you if I start filming again. Oh, because of the... Uh, can't say anything. <laughs> I can't say anything, not, not for any trying to give a spoiler or take a spoiler, just you don't know. I can no no actor within the show could answer that question for you. Oh, just because they don't want you saying even anything. Yeah, because no one knows what happens. Really, we're we're, we're beyond books now, so we can't say anything about anything. Uh, okay, I accept. I will say though that with the look you have, I'm going to take a stab. You are coming back. I wouldn't definitely count on that because I actually really like this look, <laughs> and also it's much easier to cut stuff off than grow it. So. Talk as well until the next role comes along. When I spoke to you, I believe on the set of Pompeii, yeah. you mentioned how everything had really changed in the last year at that time in terms of the popularity of the show. Mm -hmm. The show's only gotten bigger since then. How has it maybe, has it become frustrating to be so recognizable? Or is it sort of like you're so proud to be part of something so great that it's, it kind of comes with it? It comes with it. I mean, there's no changing it. That's the, that's there's no. I can't fight against that. The popularity of the show or being recognisable from it, I can only accept where I am in my life and enjoy it, and that's where I'm at. I'm enjoying being on the show. I'm loving how successful it's become and how much people love it, and that's um, that's no, no nothing but a bad thing. I've, I've, be you know like any job bits of it can be tedious but you gotta live with it well I'm gonna say my, uh, well done on the show Thank jumping you. into other things yeah uh, what was the movie that made you fall in love with movies uh, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet uh, what actor or actress were you obsessed with as a kid did you have like a poster on the wall or yeah it, James Dean it was James Dean, and it was also, I had, I had like two posts of James Dean. Do you have, is one role of his the one that stands out for you, or is it just all of his work? It's a lot of his work. I mean, Rebel Without a Cause is classic. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie that you love, that you know is bad, people give you shit for it, but you still love it? For, oh. Or do you have one? I don't know whether I... I, th I know there will be one. No, because any, like... It might, there might be cheesy ones, but I, I love them. But I... No. no. It's not... No, it's a great movie. But I guess, I mean... No, Event Horizon, I absolutely love. Some people pull me up on that. No, but no. I think it's a fucking great movie. That that's probably his best film. Yeah, it's it legitimately is scary. It's a really having worked with Paul, I really you know yeah. I really love Paul, and I think it, I think that's one of the reasons I definitely wanted to work with him was that movie. It's great. It's fucking great. Yeah, I saw that in the theater, and it like really got me. The mix on the speakers with the sounds and the visuals. Yeah, really good. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, there's loads of horrors that people pull me up. I love a really cheesy horror. I love a really cheesy horror. My last yeah. question for you. Uh, what's coming up for you uh, without may or may not Game of Thrones? Uh, are you looking at scripts? Are you, while you're in town, taking meetings? Like I haven't worked this year thus far because I needed a, like a reinvent, a re-break, like a kind of resetting the brain. Sounds odd, but I did. Um, and then I've got work. I've got an amazing movie coming up next year, which I hope, you know, I don't want to curse because it's not set in stone yet. But other than that, um, yeah, I've got lots coming up. I've got lots. Cool. I will leave it there and say uh, congrats on this movie. Thank you for playing Save or Kill. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. Let me